Okay, so you downloaded Art Knights and you just opened it up and you're completely lost. Good, because listen up carefully, my name is Zeos and I'm about to tell you how to play this game like a god. So with that, play my intro. So you're telling me you're a new doctor and a new squad member. You know what we're going to do today? I'm going to hold your hands and we're going to pretty much talk about the entire game quick easy simple to understand so that you can get in the game and just be a boss so let's do it let's talk about everything that's on your screen right now and hopefully that answers most of your questions and i'll do more in-depth guides specific guides so that you are not ever lost in this channel so if you are new make sure you subscribe and smash that like button for the youtube algorithm up at the top we got the time of the date and this game goes off mountain standard time utc minus seven so for all you guys that live in the states that is going to be arizona the mountain standard time you know california plus one and we're going to talk about time a little bit later but here we go we got the currency for this game which is pretty much the gold currency the long man dollars and to the right we got the red currency the cube with spikes coming out of it and I'm not going to call it by its name because that's just going to confuse you for a beginner, but it's called Orundum. And this right here is pretty much the gacha currency or the gems or diamonds in other games that you play. And the yellow hexagon, the golden hexagon thing that you're seeing is called the Originite Prime. I'm just going to call it OP. So OP is a rare currency in this game, so you need to use this correctly. We'll talk about that. So with the basic currency system out of the way, let's talk about combat real quick. But before we do so, let's talk about sanity. So sanity is pretty much stamina in this game and you want to make sure that you are not kept like me so before you go to bed make sure you are below the cap especially if you are free to play or light spender and the reason why you don't want this to cap is because you want it to be regenerating because it does regenerate pretty slow however don't panic the game is giving you these emergency sanity potions to regain your sanity just you need to be mindful of it and you can also use the op the yellow hexagon to recover your entire sanity pool but for free to play you want to use it sparingly you want to use it maximize it during events where you need to push so in the combat window this is where you do most of your well combat where you do all the fighting and pretty much we have the storyline right here the main story the campaign click on to that six real quick we have the three hexagon blue hexagons that means that i cleared it perfectly meaning no enemies have crossed blue cube your territory so if you do that you get the three hexagons the three stars whatever you want to call it and after that you unlock auto deploy which means that you do the fight again the game is awesome it memorizes what you did plays it out exactly at times two speed why do we need to do this because you need to farm some of these materials which is going to help level up your operators as well as your base we'll talk about that very shortly and instead of using your sanity you can also do practices right here and that's not going to cost you anything but the drill plans which you get plenty of you can check out your enemy units here and know a little bit more about them as well as the map layout and if you're still stuck there is a dedicated youtube channel which you're seeing right now which explains how to beat this game with non-rare three to four star easy to get operators and in here you also need to climb as well to be more efficient in farming to level up your operators as well as your base all that good stuff you farm in here as well. But one thing to note real quick is that there is a schedule Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You guys know the drill. The resource search, C99, what you're seeing right there, that is for building your base. That thing is closed right now. So what I can farm today is the cargo escort, CE, as well as tactical drill, because in the beginning, you will need these two a lot, as well as, of course, your base material. But these two are generally to level up your three stars and the four stars really, really quick quick and as i said earlier you can use the three stars and the four stars just so you can clear quickly to the more efficient places to farm like ce4 this is where it gets really worth it and you can get up there with the three star and four star operators yeah one more thing before we leave you're going to need a lot of the dollars the gold currency which is this one right here so make sure you farm this but not too much in moderation because you also need the exp you also need the building materials and you also need the materials other materials from the campaign as well and the chips if you want to e1 and e2 e pretty much means make your operators elite they power up and unlock new skills. And the last one, personally, one of my favorites is Annihilation. And it's just as it says, you pretty much go in there and you beat up a fuck ton of 
enemies. There are 400 of them, and based on how well you do, you get the Orundums, which is the gacha currency. And of course, you can go back and repeat it. So if you don't do well the first time, it's not the end of the world. You'll be fine. But generally, in the first week, I want you guys to kill around 200 to 250 enemies per attempt. Per attempt. And that'll just get you on the right track. So you're gonna get 1200 out of 1200 per week times four, that's gonna be 4800 per month. And you can increase the cap by going to the next annihilation stage. So it gets pretty generous. And the last thing I wanna say is I don't want you to just farm one thing. You, you might get burnt out. Maybe you're doing it while you have the game open on your phone or on Nox Player and you're doing something else, watching a movie. But I want you guys to balance the farming. I'll throw a Google Doc in the video description box right underneath and it'll tell you where you want to farm most efficiently for the material that you need in the campaign. And I'll make a separate video on that as well if you guys want that. So let's Get the hell out of here, all right? So let's talk about the operators. There are eight different classes. It's not too hard to understand. When you do play this game, you'll, you'll get it. You'll get the hang of it. Trust me. We got the Vanguard, first of all. They're very important because they cost very little to deploy in combat. And they also give you back the deployment costs so that you can pump more of your operators on the battlefield. They're like a soft tank, but damn, man. They are important, trust me, in the early game when you're in the game. And we got the snipers that do range damage and they're generally physical damage, but there are of course exceptions. And the snipers also prioritize and target down the air enemies, <laughs> drones, these flying UFOs. Guards are like vanguards in that they do melee DPS, but they do a butt ton more damage. However, they don't generate deployment costs like the vanguards, but it's good to have them, of course, in your lineup. And then we got the casters. It's just as it sounds. They're like the mages, the wizards that deal magic damage or here art damage. And this is very important for the beginners because a lot of the early stages have high armor and art damage pretty much bypass that armor issue. But that does not mean you just stack the casters, all right? We'll talk about that when we talk about the squad. And let's go into the defender. They're pretty much the tanks. They're the meat shields. They, they just get dumped on. That's pretty much it. And let's talk about medics. They're the healers. And we got the specialists and the supporters. Pretty much like niche. They can slow. They can CC. They can do some weird shit. Make otters explode or push opponents off the cliff, off a building into spikes. It's, it's awesome. They're awesome as well, but they're niche. Now, as for all these classes, some operators do AoE or single targets or even both. Basically, you want to have a well-balanced roster and depending on the stage, you may need more AOE or more single target healing or damage. Yeah. And then we got the interesting parts, the promotions. So you can get your operators to E1 and E2 if they are four star and above. For three stars, they can only go up to E1, but they are still freakishly useful. We'll talk about that. And the reason why we promote them is because of the new talents and the skills that makes this operator more powerful and just, uh, just so good in combat. However, however, with that said, I want you guys to not push yourself too hard and burn yourself out to make an E2 hero right off the bat. Get the E1s going for the right heroes, which we'll discuss in this channel, and then go for the E2 afterwards, especially if you are free to play. Now we got the potential system, which is pretty much where the dupes, when you do the gotchas, the summons, if you get the dupes, it gives the small perks to your operator and your dupes, they don't go to waste. You don't feel bad about it. Okay, so leveling up your heroes give more stats and promoting them unlock new skills. Is that it? No, that's... No, 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 no. So I want you guys to also focus on the skills. Some of these skills completely change their mechanic. Like this one right here, So her skill is level 5 right now. At level 5, she gains 2 charges of this awesome burst, single target, and AoE damage. As you level up, you gain more stats as well as added bonuses or charges different mechanics that really makes the hero shine. The general rule of thumb for leveling up skills. For three star operators, you want to get them to skill two. It's practically free, it's so cheap. And for the five and the six star operators, after you do get them to E1, you pick the right skill and you want to get them to level four at least at E2, level seven. All right, so we're at the squad page and generally the rule of thumb is to have two defenders, two guards, two vanguards, two rangers, and two Casters, freaking mages, wizards, whatever. That's the general rule of thumb. Some stages you may need a little bit more casters or you may need some specialists like Shaw or Rope. They're fucking awesome, by the way. They can push and pull. But that's the general rule of thumb. It's not the Bible. You need to assess the map as well as which type of enemies you got and 
pretty much what your lineup is as well, what you have access to. But the thing I want to touch up real quick is once you do E1, your operators, you can switch the skills in the squad. In the operator page, you level up the skill, but in here, this is where you choose them before you initiate the combat. Also, I don't want you guys to just use six stars. I Before I got my six stars, I, I started with one six star, which was I just, I just started with her because she was up on the banner and this is a new account and I rerolled and if you want to if you want an extensive reroll guide a step by step then check out this video somewhere on your screen but I have made a guide on that but guys one thing I want to really stress is don't just put everything on one operator sure Chen or maybe you like you know Aija or Siege they look like they look awesome they're your waifus they're your favorites I don't want you guys to just level them up I want you guys to have a balanced roster not just balanced six stars or five stars in the beginning they cost way too much to E1 so like I said you want to use your three stars just so that you can crush the easy content so that you can get up to the higher stages so that your farming is more efficient and you don't lose fucking sanity real life sanity as well as the game sanity grinding all right so three stars don't sleep on them cruise i know she's fucking noisy and annoying as hell but you gotta love her she is awesome she costs so little that's the thing about these three stars they not only cost so little to build but they also cost so little to put down in combat so when you need that early good setup in the beginning of a fight you want to use these like Fang, like Cruz, and because you're getting so many duplicates, they're going to have the potential level up all the way to the max very relatively soon. That's going to give minus DP costs so you can put them down even faster. That's, that's why three stars are awesome. That is why a YouTube channel exists where he pretty much beats everything or almost everything with three stars and four star operators. Over here, we got the monthly sign-in. You get the bonus perks, free stuff, always awesome. Got the mail where you get your free stuff as well. The notices for the events, the durations. Look at that. So every day we log in, we get the sanity potions. That's gonna really help out the free-to-play players. And this is the settings for your volumes and everything like that. This is the limited time event where you collect the stuff. So sign in, click them, claim them. Bam, good to go. And this is more just free shit that you get for rookies. Just claim them, they're awesome. Let's go to the left here. We got, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm just being bad right now. <laughs> I'm recording this video. But these are the dailies and the weekly missions. And in other games, like I have to pretty much dedicate my time completing this. But right now as a beginner on a new account, you're going to just get these done just by playing. So it doesn't feel like a chore right now. And it's awesome. It's free, free stuff. Who doesn't want free stuff that's going to help you progress? There is the weekly. <laughs> I already finished it. And I think it just reset like a couple, I think a day ago, actually. And let's talk about the depot, which is pretty much like your bag or your inventory. And you can see what you have in case you're trying to count your head hunting permits. And speaking of the head hunting permits, that's the gotcha system right here. Boom. So this is pretty much where you get on your knees and you just pray to oranges. Like, oh my God, just give me some luck up in here. And it tells you right there in fine text, the first 10 rolls guarantee a six star operator. But if you don't have to do your 10 bombs, especially if you're free to play and there is a new banner, you don't wanna do a 10 bomb straight up. You can just do singles. You can get a six star on your first pull. Like the majority of the people on my Discord who got one on their first pull, man, that's insane. Anyways, whew. so generally if you're a beginner, you can use your OPs right there to convert it into the red crystals and you can do some 10 bombs. You can do another 10 bomb. Sure, I'm not gonna tell you guys not to do it in the beginning because that's gonna soak the fun out because starting with a six star or two or three, it just, it feels good. You don't need it, but it feels good. They're awesome looking and they're powerful. They last you throughout pretty much the entire game if you're free to play. And after that, what you do after that is you pretty much want to hoard these for specific banner that you want to spend them on. Because these banners, they guarantee you a five star or a higher, a six star operator within a certain amount of pools. And next up, we got the recruit tab where we get free operators. And I can make a separate video about this, but I'll just go over it real quick. So generally what you want to do is set this to nine hours because as you just saw, we got that five star. You have a very small chance to get that five star. And then down here, you want to choose the tag that you want, which we will transition into 
right now. Okay, so this is your go-to link, your go-to source for your recruitment. I'm just gonna touch up on it lightly here. So once you see top operator tag and you see a Vanguard tag, that means that you're going to get Siege. However, if you see the top operator tag with the range tag, as well as the Vanguard tag, you have to decide either you're going to go for Siege or one of these four operators in the pool. And there are some special tags as well, like crowd control, you get these five stars. You, If you get a Texas, whew, she is so good. And you get the summon, you get mayor. Now let's talk about fast redeploy tag and why this is important in the game because of gravel. And the reason why I'm talking about gravel, we need to go into the store real quick. Let's go into the certificates. And here, this is where you claim a lot of these free rewards for playing the game. And right here, you can choose a six star operator like Ifrit's or or a Lapland, and Lapland is amazing. Whew. So when you get the duplicates, you can shard them into these certificates and gravel because she is a four star, you can get the yellow certificates. And with the three star duplicate certificates, in the beginning, you wanna get the LMDs as well as the tactical battle records so that you can progress quickly with their three stars, promote them, go, go, go. Climb the campaign as well as the supply missions, yeah. Now that we're in the store, you can get these skins for free. They don't add any bonus in terms of stats. They're just visuals cosmetics and here we got the dollarino packs and pretty much i really if you're going to support the game a little bit i highly recommend the monthly card it's 4.99 it's going to give you the sanity potion as well as the, the the gacha currency the red one which you can save up for the banners that you want but the sanity potion is going to keep your sanity your real sanity in check these three packs right here are also worth it if you're willing to spend a little bit more the starter headhunting pack that's awesome, as well as the monthly headhunting packs. This one does refresh every month. That's why it's called the monthly. And over here, this is where you gotta pay attention to as a free to play or all, all players, because every five levels you can purchase these with your OP and you're going to get rewarded back nicely for that. And it's going to give you other resources as well. So you want to have the OPs ready for these and you also need to <laughs> click on the free packs as well. Now as for the furnitures, you don't have to buy them here. You can buy them in the base. There is a wider selection there. If you go for the sets, you get more ambiance. Okay, so now that we are here, I need you guys to listen up. I need you guys to do something. I need you to be social. Get out there and make friends. Make friends, whether you join my Discord or the official Art Knights Discord or get on Reddit. Leave your friends tag in the comment section. Add the friends because you're going to get these credits every day. A lot of them. Just make sure that if you are over the cap and you will, Make sure you spend them in here and before the daily resets, make sure you are below 300. So you got on Discord and you made some friends. What you gotta do is go into the friends window, add them here, case sensitive. And once you added them, you can see their activity levels when they logged in. And this right here is important, the orange circle thing. It's about to end. This one, let me see right here. Let me see if there's a fresh one. This is a fresh one. It's just ticking down. So you click on them and you can visit them. Here we go. Gotta wait for the delay, the loading screen. And once we get in there, you're going to get free credits right there. So you get 30 credits once per friend per day. And that's how you get credits. And there are other ways as well. And we need to head over to the base to do so. And this is like the idling part, the mini game. And this is a lot of fun. I really love this feature. And over here, we have the reception room. And here, your operators are working hard to find clues. And once you get all the clues, you click this right here, and then people who visit your crib, they're going to get 30 credits. And you, for unlocking it after a day, after 24 hours, you're going to get 210. And that is going to be a lot of free credits. And here, you can also receive, just like that. And over here, you're searching, you can claim them. Boom, like so. And once you have the clues, you just click them like so. And then you have all the clues, and then you unlock it, and bam, now people can visit your crib. And they'll get 30 credits. Make sure you do this, be a good friend. Be a good friend. So just to touch up on the base really quickly, I want you guys to have the right operators in there not your just cute wife who's up in there just chilling i want you guys to get the bonus perks for having the right operators up in there and that will give you bonus perks whether it gives better production or faster production more efficiency you're going to rule as for the building plan i have the two four three what that means is that i have two training posts and four factories and three power plants so if my factories are pumping out resources which i can trade in the trading posts to get the long man dollars my power plants are keeping my base alive 
but eventually I can go with a 153. But in the beginning, don't worry about that too much. You can go back and change them. What I want you to think about is to upgrade your base, upgrade your base and collect your resources and generate more resources and put the right operators in there and make sure they go to rest as well in the dormitories. Like as you can see from my operators, you can see that my crew is fresh, morale is good. Cardigan, she, she still has half a tank left in her. So I'm just gonna work her <laughs> right now, but you can see the perks right there of the operators, what they're providing. So you can really min-max this. Don't just put any cute waifus up in there without the perks. Like this one, Moose, she's not gonna give you a perk in the factory. So I think that's gonna be it, guys. So, wow, that was long. Oh, whew, that was a long. It took me an hour and a half to record this. Hopefully the video isn't too long. Uh, I just wanted to get out all the information, an updated beginner's guide. Hopefully you can come back and just use this as a guidance and it was helpful. Just play the game at your pace. It's not like some of these idle games where you have to hoard and hoard for an entire year to make progress. It's not like that at all. You're going to see a lot of progress in the beginning. You're going to see a lot of progress later down the road. It's going to be a lot of fun. Like the skill system, upgrading your operators and then up upgrading the skills that alone and seeing the new skills in action. It's a lot of fun. So take it slow. Don't burn yourself out. Hopefully this was helpful. If you guys want to see more beginner's guide, top mistakes, anything, um, updated ones now that we're in like the spring now of 2020 and we have chapter five as well. I'll pump more guys. If you like this video, if you want to support my journey in Arc Knights, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. And if you want to leave your friends tag down below for viewers, then you can do that as well. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out for now. Your boy Zeals. Peace.